Oh, loaded really quick. In the bottom left, we have here sporting the purple. It is none other than the Zerg and the Zarg, who took game two, keeping himself in the series. The victor of game one was his opponent sporting the blue in the top right. Is the Terran Zyarkukovix. And this has turned out to be a pretty good series so far. I gotta say. Both players actually going for kind of a more big army style. And I have to say, it's it's worked out actually well for both of them. Anuzar kind of feigning some aggression earlier in the, the previous game, but coming around with what turned out to be a macro plane instead. Zerg Q really overreacts, and then with a bad move command of a bunch of siege tanks right out into the Zerg forces, his fate was sealed. Hopefully he can avoid such errors in this game. Looking at this map, we have Yonsu here, which of course we have to throw out. Shout out to whoever designed this map, because this is a really cool idea. It takes two different um, tile sets. they got the snow tile set, as well as the like grassy tile set. Splits them in half and runs them down the center. I want to see more people do this, but with like the more ridiculous ones. Like, maybe not the lava one. I can understand why not using that is a good idea because it like darkens the map and kind of hurts people's eyes. But, you know, we've, we've got the more foresty ones. We've got the Protoss ship. Let's make a Protoss ship used with like the metal Terran thing. It's kind of cool, but uh, have to wait on that. Gas in the spawning pool as before. So it looks like this is Anizarg's favorite opening regardless of what he does which means for ZRQ that he's going to walk in here, see this, and basically be able to conclude nothing. And I got to say, like, that may seem a little bit, you know, simplified to you Zergs out there. You're like, what do you mean by that? What? I mean, there's different ways you can do that. You've got different timings. I know that, but I can tell you from experience that when you're playing around this level and you're not playing a lot, you're not going to know that as a Terran, necessarily. You're not going to be thinking in your head, oh, there's so many seconds of one by the spawning pool went down. No. You're going to see spawning full gas, and you're like, okay, time to run away now because I don't want to lose my SCP. All he knows is that his opponent didn't go for a hatch first. That's the important thing. Factory coming up right away here from uh, ZeroQ this time. I think he has a little bit of a different plan. He hasn't really done this most of the game. Usually he just sticks on... Um, I think it was more sticks on barracks tech for a little bit. Or moving up, but it looks like he's just going to go up there a little bit quicker this time. He may have something else in mind for us. Perhaps a uh, little mine drop or something like that. Not proxying it, though, so he's not trying to hide it. He does have the wall off up there. He's able to prevent the Zerg from picking up on it. And, oh, and Zerg. Looks like this time he's thinking, you know what? I didn't have very much of an economy last time. I didn't like that. I'm going to make sure I have a lot of economy this time. Saving up minerals just for that hatch. He's not dealing with it yet, just yet. There it goes. Third hatchery down, and Anuzarg is going to sprint forward on the economy on this one. ZRQ has no idea that this is happening. In the meantime, he's just going to be content to poke at this building repeatedly with his SCV. Back over in the natural the Terran's base, we can see that he has rallied a bunch of Marines to the corner, is trying to kill this Overlord, but has found the sweet spot and now cannot be killed. Hopefully it'll be used for uh, scouting later, at least pick up on maybe a uh, drop leaving out onto the map or something. Or he could just sit in the corner and actually accomplish nothing for the rest of the game. Hey, if he doesn't die, he at least gives you supply. Yeah, that rhymed. Nice. Anyway. Glancing over the chat, see if anything interesting is happening. Just the usual, just the usual conversations that one expects. A lot of Zerglings coming out for Anasarg right now. I guess he, he feels a bit naked, not having any real defenses. So he's just uh, grabbing a few of those lings rather than going up for drones. I, from what I know, though, unless you're really concerned about your opponent doing some kind of rush, this is usually not a... Oh, that's what he's doing. I was going to say, this is usually not a great idea because it's a little bit inefficient. Now, the thing is, it's not going to matter. Whether he got the lings or not in this situation, he's grabbing that wonderful cloak tech for the Banshees. And we're going to definitely be seeing some harassment. Now, unfortunately, there is nothing in the form of detection here. And it doesn't look like that that's on his radar. In fact, he's jumping up to the Hydrogen. Not build now. He will. Okay. He sees the uh, Hellion. Snipes that off. Got a feeling pretty good about yourself in that situation. Hopefully, um, he's got Spore Crawler somewhere in the back of his mind, as a natural part of his build. If not, this is going to come as a very cruel and frightening response. Frightening surprise. May even get his third notice. It looks like still though that ZRQ presumes that his opponent is still on two base. It doesn't. I don't think he's actually checked for this third yet. 
But yeah, this is, this is going to hurt a lot. It's going to come down to really how well Anuzar can keep his cool. He can just get those support crawlers down right away. If he can try and keep the Banshee running around so that it's not constantly killing off workers. It's also going to depend on how good ZRQ is at, is at controlling this thing. Maybe he looks away at the wrong time after he sends the Banshee over. He could lose it without doing any damage. That's all possible here. So don't, don't read the situation as being totally... Uh, one way or the other. Not to mention, we have all these lings on the map, and they can't do anything to a Banshee, so they may actually just decide, hey, you know what? You're gonna hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you. Just run them straight into that natural. You'll notice there's no uh, wall at the front of the Terran's base, the natural down there. Nothing to protect that from any ling run-bys. And the Banshee is seen well before it gets to the base. The reaction is not immediate, though. I do think he has seen this. But there doesn't seem to be any attempt at uh, putting down detection just yet. He does have the resources for it. And in fact, he's actually just running the Hydra's forward and trying to poke away at the Banshee and does manage to scare it back home. This is really unfortunate for ZRQ. Is, uh, if the ability to get defenses up for this is definitely going to be uh, there for the Zerg well before the Banshee actually gets there. Does have a couple bunkers running up at the front here. No Marines in them or anything, though. Does help to start to provide a wall off. Starting to pick up gas, and unfortunately still no spore crawlers. So having seen the Banshee and the fact that it didn't cloak, he has concluded that he doesn't need to worry about that, I think. A little bit of a scary assumption, but I think it's working out. In this particular situation, as ZRQ does not seem to be at all interested in trying to run the Banshee over there anymore. Gotta say, Anuzarg's army is incredibly out of position. <laughs> he's really lucky he's not being dropped right now, or that that Banshee's not running around the other side. Uh, with Hydra's all the way forward like that, he'd have virtually no ability to respond to really anything happening. He does have those lings. I'm not sure where they've disappeared to. There's no, okay, most of them are dead. That answers my question. I also tried to run in with them earlier. Evolution Chambers, uh, grabbing a few medevacs. It looks like both players are just kind of sitting back for a bit, powering up before deciding on their next move. Now, Anazar is actually still very behind in his drone count, still hanging out at 30. He does have three bases, but he's really only mining off of about one and a half. So he really needs to find a way to get those drones out there, or else he's not going to be getting the economy of edge that he was actually going for at the beginning. Seems for the moment as well that ZRQ is just, uh, you know, it's good that he preserved that Banshee. He, he keeps the threat alive, if nothing else. It keeps Anazar wondering thing might just show up in his base and you can see he's actually spreading overlords out in the map in kind of a line pattern so really keep an eye on most of the airspace it's actually pretty nicely done from him there is a little bit of an edge where you could slip through right there on the right but you know from zrq's perspective he doesn't have any idea about that so most likely we'll pick up on something if it starts running through and banshee's like hey what's up how you doing you doing all right I think those are a few marines running through the middle of the map. No, those were hellions. Okay. Three hellions running around the map. Meet the hydras. Hydras are like, hey, I do way more damage than you can. Boom, they're dead. Now, I don't know if he actually noticed the banshee's going through. Got to remember one thing that is often true at this level of play is that your your mind gets over-focused on things, and sometimes you don't notice the banshee. Those flying out while the rest of the units are running across the map, and you feel safe. You feel safe, and you are most certainly not. And that banshee's just like, hey... There's supposed to be a third here or something because uh, I'm not doing anything useful. Now, the important thing is whether or not he actually cloaks before going in there. That Banshee's actually damaged enough to where if he's not paying too close attention, it may simply die before it does much. It may just try to focus on the, the Queen. That would be a disaster. It looks like we are having to wait on that as ZRQ seems to have forgotten about the Banshee for a little bit here. That I can really blame him as there's a decent, so a decent force of Hydras just kind of hanging out at the front of the space. Anyway, see you later, Printf. Nice to see you, man. Okay. The Hellions have been spotted in the bottom right. A little frustrating for ZRQ, but that usually is also a trigger for the person to remember that they have a Banshee. And boom, there it's moving again. Banshee is moving out toward the middle of the map. Uh, looks like he actually wants to bring it up here to deal with the army. Man, this threat of this Banshee this could be doing so much more. Unfortunately, it looks like he's just going to be hanging out with the army. And speaking of which, the army is now going to be engaging against all these hydras. There's actually nothing to really buff with this. No, he's going to lose the banshee with all the. Ah! Ah! If the banshee only cloaked, he would have at least been able to take out most of the hydras. 
as there's no form of mobile detection anywhere nearby. Anyway, it seems that the Hydras are actually content to run up the ramp into the middle of a bunch of siege tank fire. A lot of them are going to die pointlessly as they pick away at these uh, bunkers and fail to kill anything. So that ends up being kind of an even trade, except the simple reality of the matter is that Anuzarg has gotten up to 54 workers, he has three bases, and he's building a lot of stuff. So now we're having that stuff factor come into play. Now there is the other reality as well that he's not injecting super great, so a lot of this money actually isn't going to get used. But, you know, except for what it is, if he can get on top of that, or even just, hey, look, I, I think I've even heard Day9 say this. is like, if you can't keep totally on top of your your uh, injects, then and there's nothing else you can do in the spot of the spur of the moment, just throw down more hatches. Get more macro hatches. Do whatever you got to do. Play it like it's single player if you have to. But still, get that money spent. And it seems that Anuzarg is actually thinking something along those lines, but uh, that and taking bases. He's actually cleared out the rocks in the bottom right as well, so it looks like that's his next target. Uh, no attempt to make any more Banshees from ZRQ. Looks like he's been kind of shocked out of doing that. I'm trying to look at, trying to get a handle on what are we looking at tech here. This infestation pit in Hydras doesn't look like he necessarily is lining up doing anything else, just grabbing the upgrades. Um, currently sitting at 1-1 for the Zerg and only one attack. The Terran. And it looks like anazar has got a good... He's got that overlord. He's picked up on the uh, naked expansion over here trying to get put up on a full... Oh, fuel's actually going down right at that moment. That's unfortunate. He's going to lose those as the brace is going to be driven off as well. Are they putting himself into kind of a corner here? This is a little bit dangerous. He actually could uh, get trapped back there, but it looks like there's actually not enough for uh, from CRQ to actually cause that to happen. Loses the command center. A lot of minerals down the drain. And more importantly, does not yet have that base. Looks like the Hydra's just going to hang out on the high ground here. He's trying to build another one again and kind of doing it in front of the Zerger, though. There's definitely not enough to actually defend this. And uh, yeah, definitely has been noticed. This involved Marines getting ready to engage against the Hydras and Siege Tanks moving forward. Once these are sieged, though, he actually should be in, he should have the ability to hold this. And hey, Spire come up in the background. Just as Annie sits in the chat is saying that Meta Switch would be a good idea. And now the forces are actually moving in on top of each other. It looks like the Marines are engaging against the Hydras. The Hydras are actually not shooting at the tanks. It's getting a lot of really great shots on the Hydras off. Just like that, Army Advantage is now really. Uh, not as much in the Zerg's favor as it was here. He does have a decent number of units out in the middle of the map here. Other units besides Hydras might be a good idea at this point. Uh, might be worth considering. As the number of siege tanks that have come out is now going to be something of a frightening amount. The Zerg player. And I think at this moment, uh, ZRQ has finally seized the ability to have a third. Base is not up quite yet, and he's building another command center. So it looks like he's going to try and double expand here. A little bit of a risky move. A lot, of, a lot of lings out on the map, and these these siege tanks are only in this spot. Ooh, looks like he's actually just kind of rallying these. Was he rallying them or just moving the hydras up there? Either way, taking a lot of unnecessary losses right there. 28 zerglings just coming out. Has enough gas for about 8 hydras. I mean, 8 mutas, not 8 hydras. Just another overlord right there. Taking a lot of little unnecessary losses here and there. These upgrades are fantastic for the zerg, though. 2-2 two, two at the moment. Still only a one attack upgrade on the Marines. Nothing on the siege tanks. So the vast majority of his firepower has not been augmented in any way. And uh, that may end up being the story of this. It's one thing that cannot be underestimated, even if you're at a weird, like, compositional disadvantage. Like, no, okay, it's not going to matter if you just run around in front of the siege tanks and don't do anything. I was going to say, if you have a lot of stuff and a lot of upgrades, there's not much that beats that if you don't also have a lot of upgrades and a lot of stuff of some kind. Hey, well, see you later, Andy Citizen. Don't worry, I saw it, man. See you later, dude. Couple of mules running out at the side here. Just have a good, yeah, nicely placed sensor tower here. It gives him a good idea of any attacks coming around the left side. But he does not know. Oh, it's a planetary fortress. That's actually very nicely positioned. It's gonna be kind of hard to break that spot. Fortunate reality is that his uh, the flank here of this army, kind of not so great tech, not really that well detected, protected. There's a lot of uh, lings right there. Might be able to get around that and simply just walk into the natural and kill everything. That 
that's uh, it would be, you know, he'll lose a lot of links trying it. Here he goes. He's running forward here, actually trying to kill off just the siege tanks. Going to do that. There's a couple bunkers here as well, but there's no uh, SMG there. Good news is, oh, he does lose the bunker. Good news is that he had enough there to hold that. Things don't get a whole lot done other than cutting down the siege tank count a little bit, which is, you know, it is important right now. The person with the economy advantage is most certainly the Zerg at the moment. It's enough basis to actually mine with all of his workers. Not the same cannot really be said of the of the Terran as much as he would like right now. He would love to have A enough workers to even mine off three bases and three bases to mine off of. But he is content to go with two for the moment. Ling's engaging very far forward here, running back to the siege tank support. Lot. Both sides taking decent hits right there. Zerg falling back. Oh, Corrupter and Broodlord to back it up. There we go. Kind of interesting that he isn't going for just Mutas, kind of like Tythor is asking there. But, you know, hey. Hey. Maybe he likes his Broodlords. And I gotta say, the surprise is brutal. For as many Marines as he has at the moment, if once there's enough of these Broodlords in play, that's not gonna deal so great with this. It's very hard to charge forward through a wall of free units. So if he can get these numbers up high enough, it's going to be tricky here. I don't know if he should engage with only four, though. That, that seems a little bit light to me. No, oh, he's not. Okay, yeah, he's definitely powering this up. It's also the reality that the Terran does not have any Vikings at all. So the Corruptors actually wouldn't be all that necessary in this fight. He's going to have 12 Broodlords. Ugh. Ugh. Oof. And, you know, he might... To be honest, guys, he might just be thinking, hey, I had the mutas. I wasn't able to control them so great. Now he knows about the Broodlords, though. He's going to be like, uh-oh, I should jump forward to do something about this. He tries to run the Marines forward to do something about the Broodlords, but the Marines are actually just firing on the Broodlings and not doing anything to the Broodlords at all. He's losing them one by one to all of these free units. Wings running up on the backside, actually, to finish that off. Broodlords have started picking off on the high ground uh, on the tanks up here. This, yeah. Thor wasn't engaging in some Broodlords either. He's actually just firing at the Broodlings. And I think this is going to be fatal. Production is now camped by a bunch of free units that he can't really do anything about. Uh, two Vikings coming out. Now, unfortunately, there's actually no anti-air, really. I think there might be some Hydras in this army still. Yeah. If he loses those, those Vikings will be able to kill everything. Ooh, here they come. Still losing a lot of production behind this. Syracuse saying, GG, Lords. Is he actually just going to tap out? Has he not realized? Has he not realized that? Yep, yes he is. GG, well played. Okay. For a second, I thought we were going to see the Great Massacre of Wars 2014, but it's like that's not going to happen. Well, it was a good series.